Hey guys, it's uh, Cockpunk uh, Gordon here, coming to explain a uh, new test we did last weekend. Got a couple of tests we did last weekend, so I'm going to be uploading some new videos here uh, as soon as I get them from Bryce. Uh, but this is one that Bryce has been wondering about, and that's because Man and his barrel test, he tested um, kits for accuracy. He did a lot of accuracy testing, which is a huge undertaking. Um, and, but his test... Uh, left uh, me, me and Bryce, actually more Bryce than me, with a few questions. And the main question was, what is the ideal paint-to-barrel match? Uh, we've all been, anybody who believes in paint-to-barrel match has been doing the blow test for years and years and years. Um, but is that really the ideal? Because that's how man did his test, was based off the blow test. So we did our own test, um, shot my EMAG here, with, uh, it's cocker threaded, so we shot a freak kit plus a couple of extra inserts. Uh, we shot a CCM carbon fiber kit, uh, which covered most of the ranges, and we shot um, uh, just some single one-piece barrels that have hanging around. I, I don't know, I got a pretty substantial cocker collection. Anyway, so uh, either over here or over here, not sure which one, uh, there'll be a link to the data sheets themselves, which actually has the chronograph readings. We shot 20 balls through each barrel, didn't change the gun didn't chrono the gun after each barrel or each insert we just went with what it had um, so that way we could compare efficiency and uh, with uh, removing the gun. Anyway the gun shot really consistent so chronograph shot him right into a bucket it was easy as pie. Uh, kind of a long thing though because a lot of barrel changing. Anyway so data sheets we got will be here or here Whichever side it is, I don't know. Let me think. I think it's on that side. We'll see. Anyway, but I figured I'd explain these to you because um, uh, it can get kind of confusing if you haven't had any math or stats background yet. So, here we go. We took... Um, these are just uh, the graphs. Let me get this strap out of the way for you. These are just the graphs. Here's the CCM kit. So we, we plotted the average of the 20 shots, which would be the mean, minus 60, this is just so we can put it on one chart here, that way um, we don't have to have a graph with the 200 or 300 scale on it, we can just go to 30. Um, but we're looking for just the difference, so it's alright. Um, obviously this is not twice or three times, or this is not three times of that, it's just uh, a 20 foot per second difference. Um, so that's the mean, that's the average of the 20 shots, and then there's standard deviation, that's this low guy here. And I thought I'd explain that to you guys so you could understand. So we have a normal curve. Statisticians love normal curves. And right down the middle here, we have the mean or average. On um, This is the axis of value, so this is going to be feet per second down here. And this is the number of values that we collected out of our data set. So obviously the average or right near the average should have the most amount of shots and then as we go farther out we get less and less and less right so standard deviation is a measure of central tendency how closely these spots are located together because you see one standard deviation which you can look up the formula on wikipedia or whatever it's a bunch of things squared over a bunch of things yada 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 yucky anyway so we already calculated it so uh, within one standard deviation of the mean, 66% of the data is supposed to fall. 66% of your shots should fall within one plus or minus one standard deviation. Inside two is something like 78, and inside three is 99% of your data should fall within three standard deviations. So, when this gun shows to get a standard deviation of 1.9, that means 99% of the shots fired will be within five or six feet per second plus or minus five or six feet per second which is really good that means out of a, a case of paintballs 20 paintballs will be outside of that range which is really good if anybody spent time shooting a gun over a chrono more than just four or five shots um, so that's what standard deviation is obviously the lower standard deviation the better that means all these are really close together um, so I love this carbon fiber kit because it shows pretty much everything we want except for I wish there was a 695 and like a 0.79 down here or 0.679 because on the efficiency line we can see we're getting significantly lower feet per second with the larger bore barrel. This we believe is because 
there is leakage around the ball uh, as it flies through because there's a clearance there. So there's leakage of air which leads to um, less air pushing, actually pushing the ball which leads to a lower velocity. On the other side uh, it looks like it, we kind of max out at a certain point here but once the ball creates a really good seal it flies faster because all of the air behind it is uh, trapped and so it's more efficient. And it's interesting because .679 is what we found to be the blow tests most accurate. Um, which, if you notice the standard deviation, is the worst at. So your gun is actually shooting less consistent with a good paint-to-barrel match than it would be if it was either underboring or overboring because you notice those guys go down. And here's where I'll bring out the Freak because here's what I like about the Freak. Uh, as weird as it is that the 687 dipped a little bit in standard deviation, but it also dipped a lot in efficiency on this one. Um, but we can notice the same kind of trend thing going on here. But the other thing is you'll notice that at the extremes of the uh, at the extremes we uh, kind of go back down in standard deviation. This is because we think anyway. Same thing happens here. We go down. Our worst standard deviation is actually at our best thing. So uh, that means when you overbore, you're getting worse efficiency, but better consistency. When you underbore, you get better consistency and better efficiency. Probably more barrel breaks. We might we might do a test on barrel breaks soon. But the middle one, this ideal paint to barrel match that most of us have been using for years is actually the worst because, and this is why we think it is, because the paintballs themselves vary in size. They just do. There's no way to avoid that. Well, the barrel doesn't. So, when you shoot 20 balls through an underboard barrel, every ball is going to stick. Every ball is going to seal, regardless of its size, uh, which will lead to really good consistency. On the other hand, when you overbore, every ball is going to roll through which will lead to really good consistency. But when you're right on the edge there, when you're right there, some of the balls will stick, some of the balls won't stick, some of them will roll right through, some of them will be ideal, and so you have this consist inconsistency due to the paint itself. And that's why we're going to recommend that, actually, if you look at these graphs, we can get, we can get good consistency and good efficiency if we go basically just one step in either direction from the ideal. One step in either direction from the ideal is where you're gonna probably be the best. If you can, try and push an underbore. If you're only gonna shoot 500 rounds in a day, you're probably not gonna get too many barrel breaks. Try for an underbore. You'll actually get better efficiency um, and just as good a consistency. If you're shooting like three cases a day or you're playing a tournament, obviously overboring is gonna be smarter because you're probably not gonna get as many barrel breaks. Now I say probably because that's probably a test we're going to do soon is some sort of barrel break test um, to see if a tighter bore really does break more paint than an open bore or um, does a tighter bore clean out your barrel faster. Um, so we'll look into that um, but on the meantime we're going to recommend that one insert above or below your below test is really where you're going to get your ideal performance and if you can push the underbore try it. Um, lots of closed bolt guns love to be underboard. Um, lot, most of the stuff nowadays though is open bolt, so you might be smarter overboring. Just one insert. You, you'll notice though the monster overboring. If you look at the charts, kills your efficiency and your consistency starts to go down again once you get way on the outside edge. So don't go extreme. Don't monster do anything. Just go you know a, you know three five thousandths on either side would be smart. So that's what we're going to say for that, and I uh, hope you find our data sheets interesting, and uh, I'll get back to you guys soon on another test. All right, thanks.